and uh, I can uh, call on the neighbor, so we're on for the February, we will agree um, on this particular point. And then there are radical variations between cities. Schoenberg took this on as a kind of personal crusade, because uh, a lot of the geographers at the, in the middle of the last century were kind of seeing cities, the spatial scientists, in fact, were seeing cities as being a kind of a generic phenomenon. And he said that's absolutely not this uh, uh, vast differences between different cities. The quotation from Weber, he says, a comparative study for cities of the same city at different times would not aim at finding analogies and parallels, the ancient rather be precisely the opposite, to identify and define the individuality of each development, the characteristics which made the one conclude in a manner so different from that of the other. This done, we can then determine the causes which led to these differences. So he's saying it's not, the point is not to find the similarities between the cities. It's very much to find the, 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 the differences. And to, um, uh, uh, those differences themselves are going to be part of the kind of explanatory structure that we that come up with. And that transformation then is the essence of the development of the earth that the city has always changed. We know of, the, I mean, the, the kind of standard phasing of cities says pre-industrial, uh, pre industrial, industrial post-industrial, but actually if we look at cities, we can see many more changes, many more sort of um, other variations on the theme, let's say, or the very kind of loose theme of, of city. There's always been change going on in cities. So much so that I'm proposing, and that a lot of uh, other people have proposed, that uh, transformation is a kind of fundamental of cities. But what about the materiality and the spatiality of this? Now, it start, that starts to become interesting, because we're talking about, then, transformation that's seen in a very, very material way. And how, how do cities resolve? That becomes then, an, an interesting question. How do they kind of resolve into these pre-industrial, industrial, post-industrial post -industrial forms? Well, my proposal is the hypothesis, if you like, which I've worked quite far on already. The, the hypothesis is that there's something kind of in the city itself, in its organizational structure, or in the structural places that Jacob Malthus was talking about, which starts to give you these different kinds of, uh, of, of urban forms. Uh, as I say, this is all research on the going. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to give you any answers to these questions today. I think I'm probably running out of time rapidly. What is the time limit? Half past one. Sorry? Yeah, How much time do I have to? Mm, ten minutes. Ten minutes, okay. Um, okay, so these, the last um, uh, methodological points that we come to, which is the one of, me, of, of, of material process. What I've been talking about is organizational discontinuity, but at the same time, we get material cont continuity. I'm saying political systems might change, okay, but the city needs to change as well. So you get like different social organizations, different political organizations, but the city needs to change. There's a certain kind of continuity in the materiality of the thing that needs to be acknowledged as well. And this is something which we often uh, overlook, especially because, you know, with the cultural, what I was talking about before, cultural turn, we were talking all the time about cultural things, about immaterial things, forgot about the kind of the, the, the massiveness of this thing, the kind of um, persistence of this thing in the city. You know, what is, you know, we have to, we have to consider that as being uh, something uh, to uh, take into our equations. Alan Pratt wrote a very important paper in 1984 where already he was talking about this, the material continuity of the city as an issue of, um, of place. I don't agree all the, all the way with Alan Pred, but this idea of material continuity is very, very important. Formation. So, what formation is about, 
about what? It's about political organizational change, but it's also about something human in all of that as well. Because as things are and as things change, there's a human kind of perception. We have to, we are involved in all of this. We, we, we do things in the city. There's an enormous amount of, uh, of, um, of, of very, very complex interventions of um, uh, transitions of ways that people do things, and ways that people change doing things. That goes on in all of this. So we need to know places continuously as well as places being continuously. There's the kind of human factor, there's the material factor. My view is that these things are not far apart, actually. We don't separate these two things, certainly not in a phenomenological perspective. That the human side of it, or the perception of structure, of order, and so on, is actually part of the materiality, and probably the only part of the materiality we really know. Okay? So the knowing of places continuously is very, very important. Issues start to emerge in all of this, which I've written about in the um, uh, footprint paper, which uh, was in footprint in 2009, I think. 2000, I think it's uh, number number five, where we talk about issues like path dependence, for example, which is a concept from complexity science, and we talk about issues of backward compatibility. When you talk about transformation, the issue about the backward compatibility. When you're talking about transformation, you can't simply take one situation, one social organization, one way of doing things, and then stop at 12 o'clock at night and the next day start doing something else. There's always some kind of transition with where you start to see old ways of doing things and new ways of doing things uh, being co-present in the same environment. And it's that that I'm talking about when I talk about backward compatibility. Why you always see in these transitions a relationship between what was changed and what has become new. Okay, so what, uh, what the pattern was before and what the pattern was after, there's always a link, there has to be, in this uh, view of, uh, of materiality. And my um, uh, presupposition is that it's got, this has got something to do with structural places. And then what we're starting to talk about here also, we, you know, I've mentioned also in, in talking about the, the structure of the city, that we might start to be seeing in, in all of this a real multiplicity. In other words, when we're talking about perceptual fields, we don't talk about and when, you understand when I mention the words perceptual fields, I'm talking about space, a particular kind of space. When we talk about perceptual fields, there might be a multiplicity of this. Now, there's a, another argument which I'd like to go into here, but I can see I'm not going to have the time, which doesn't need the idea of subjectivity to get that far. We can, in other words, we are, when we're talking about a multiplicity of spaces, this multiplicity of spaces might be perfectly real, okay? objective, that it is so that there is a multiplicity of spaces. It's not just a figment of our imagination. Okay? One of the ways that we can see this is that we actually build them. We build multiple spaces. Okay? So the construction of the world, this goes a little bit back to Cronon, who eh? was talking about nature being our construction as well. The world around us, in other words, the second nature that Cronon talks about, is something also which can have this multiplicity of spaces. There's a moot point how, how many spaces a natural, so-called natural world has. My view would be that it doesn't contain Cartesian space at all, that it contains even more multiples of spaces. And in fact, this viewpoint that I'm starting to develop here this phenomenological viewpoint says that what we're moving from is from chaos to order. And that human beings are creating order in the world. They are ordering the world to their own uh, ways of doing things that there's a, uh, a rather, rather against the kind of um, 